Hello everyone and welcome back to Whiskey Wednesday. Today, something very fun, which I know has got us all very excited, is the first of two reviews of the Mikkel Tor range. <clears throat> now this isn't actually labelled as Glenallachie. Um, it's from the Glenallachie distillery, and does state so, sorry, got a little bit of lunch on my finger there, and does state so on the back of the bottle, but on the front doesn't say anything about Glenallachie. So Mikkel Tor, um, I'm assuming that is a hill, Somewhere in, in and around the distillery. Tor is another name for a hill or a peak. It's being treated almost as a separate entity, but it's coming from the same distillery. So this is Glen Allachie's Rush into Peated Whiskey. I believe they're all peated at 35 ppm. There were four releases. We'll be doing two of them over the next two weeks. 48% natural colour, non-chill filters. You can see where they've got the inspiration for the new Glen Allachie labels too. So these came out tail end of 2023 and they really have gone for that nice simple color scheme with the name just as visually clear as possible. This is the sherry one uh, matured in Oloroso and Pedro Jimenez casks at five years old. They're also being very honest with that too just on the back there little five. Five real whiskey, loads of sherry, high ABV from Billy Walker. Let's just jump in. Whoa. The folks at the Froy Guard Bag and Magabullin need to start uh, buckling up their seatbelts a little bit. I'm going to tell you the price before. These have actually been lent to me, this one and the other one, um, by a good customer of ours and at the whiskey shop called Ray. He's very, he lent us the Talisca Parley a couple of weeks ago too, so he's got an amazing collection. Very happy to be have these shared with me. But wow, that smells like an isla. The rubberiness and the dryness and just the phenolic content alone. That reminds me of some of the best like Ardbeck single casks I've tried that never made it into bottling. So rubbery and deep. That's gonna be a sound bite someone's gonna steal. Outside of the smoke though, of which it is prevalent, we have um, kind of classic sherry notes really. There's some nice marinated fruit notes, there's some big chocolate notes on this. Reminds me almost the scent of cocoa butter. It has that going on with it. Some nice woodiness too. I'm getting almost like, um, it's almost like that really thin wood that they used to make cigar boxes out of. In fact, even like cigar, cigars themselves, to be fair. Well, they're a little bit like a humidor. Stunning color on this too. Um, you know, five-year-old liquid. That's pretty dark. This is like a brown t-shirt, but that, that is pretty red liquid at five years old. Billy Walker plus Sherry. Everyone else might as well just quit now. And there are some nice fruity notes in there. Um, they're kind of fruity notes that I'm not normally a big fan of. They're like Christmas fruity notes. So it is, even though we always talk about raisin and plum and stuff like that, not a huge fan of them as flavors in general. But there's that raisiny, plummy, almost date feel to it. It's like someone smoked a sticky toffee pudding and then covered it in chocolate while someone else is smoking a cigar next to you. Could be pleasant, could be terrible. I'm gonna put it in the pleasant category. Let's try this. Okay. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, and whoever else may be watching, I present to you the killer of Isla. For so many reasons. That is a delight to drink. Um, if you enjoy things like Long Row and Springbanks and stuff, you can actually buy this, which is quite nice. 
This is sub 50 quid a bottle. The prices vary per retailer, but it's anywhere between about 42 to 50 pounds a bottle. Let me talk to you about why I think this is an eyelay killer. I haven't purchased a bottle of Ardbeg Oogadal in a very, very long time. It's probably approaching about seven or eight years since the last time I bought an Oogadal. Not because everyone was saying the quality was declining, it's just we start, I took over this thing, you know, Whiskey Wednesday, and you want to try as much as possible. This is like Ardbeg Oogadal. It isn't as boozy, 48% for this, excuse me, versus 54.2 for the Oogadal, but it has all that flavour. Cigar box, pistachio, toffee, caramel. Not tons of smoke, but enough smoke to make it balanced and elegant and complex and detailed. Um, Ardbeg smoke does that too. Um, and the Yugadal is a sherry cask influence. It's teenage liquid. That bottle's pushing, what, 70 pounds a bottle now, give or take. Sub 50 for this. I love Lefroy 10 sherry cask. This is remarkably close to the Freud 10 sherry cask. Like, it is so close to being... If you gave me that and just put it in front of me and said, what is this whiskey? I would probably have said the Freud 10 sherry cask. The way the peat and the sherry make themselves known on the, the nose, incredible. Um, and then we've had the conversation about Lagavulin 16. My video for that came out about a year ago. It's still good whiskey, but no one really should be paying the prices that Lagavulin 16 is now at because there are things that exist which are cheaper and better, Lifferug 10 Sherry Cask being one of them, this being another one. Uh, Bonnehav and Tokiagar, their peated version. I call that baby Lagavulin. This is about the same price and does a little bit more. Um, Brookladdy, I haven't drunk Brookladdy for ages. Um, Port Charlotte's good. Again, it's about 50 pounds. But if you wanted a little bit more intensity from Sherry, this is a way to go. Bowmore, God, it's a shame about Bowmore. Um, I'll, I'll be honest, with Bowmore, if it isn't cash strength, don't bother. Bowmore, cash strength Bowmore is some of the best whiskey in the world. But the regular stuff, just don't bother. Who am I missing? Kill Homan. Kill Homan Sineg, a wonderfully big, deep Sherry cast style of whiskey. It's kind of on par with this, but again, this currently is a little bit cheaper. I've probably missed a distillery or two there. Don't know. Oh, Kalila. Yeah, it beats most Kalilas, I'll be honest with you. I like Kalila, but it beats most of them. Um, and Ardenho's release comes out this year, so we'll see what how it compares to that. But yeah, like an eyelay killer in this. It does everything you want a heavily sherried Isla whiskey to do, but it's from Speyside. It's half the age of most of them. It's, on average, well, it's the same strength as most Lefroigs, but it's cheaper. Folks, if you're looking for a new peated whiskey, I wouldn't look any further than that. The only thing that's as interesting as this, which has come out in the last couple of months, is Lag Cory Cravi, which another customer let me borrow, Ian, and I got to review that. And that thing is an absolute beast of a whiskey. Um, it's, a, it's like a year younger, or maybe nearly five, 50%, or even maybe 55%, with a sherry finish, and it's darker than that. But honestly, between Lag Cory Cravi, which will be a regular release, and this Mickle Tour, the Sherry one, that's where you need to spend your money if you want big smoky whiskies. Make value for this. I have to give this a nine. That is an outstanding bottle of whiskey, which as I finish this video, I will go and purchase one. Well, I'll do it on my phone, but I will have one bought and on the shelf because that is a bit of a revelation. It's no surprise, I suppose. I shouldn't be as surprised as I am, but it is so good. There you go, that's the review. The Mickle Tour, the Sherry one, nine out of 10. Absolutely delicious. If you can get one, go and buy it. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next week with another one. Cheers.